Hello everyone, just recording this at the end of editing, there will be a few spoilers in here, so if you don't want Masterful spoiled, I recommend clicking off now and listening to it. But without any further ado, here is my review. Hello, once again, it is another review of mine. I am Matt from Universal, as you can tell. And it, today we're going to be reviewing Masterful. Now, I did purchase a special edition, but I'm only going to be reviewing Masterful itself. I'm not going to be reviewing the short trips it came with, nor am I going to be reviewing Terror of the Master. Once I listen to that, I will review that on two universals. But here and right now, I'm reviewing Masterful. So, it wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting it just to be, like, this one big grand epic Master story. But no, it's a comedy! I mean, sure, there are serious moments in it, and uh, certainly Jeffrey Beavers' thread was very much serious, and so was Alex McQueen's in a way, but it was really just the master being the master for three hours, and different incarnations thereof. Um, so I might as well go through each master individually and see, uh, and just tell you how I feel about them, and then I'll just go over how they are together. So... First of all, I'm just going to speak about Jeffrey Beavers, as I mentioned earlier. His thread is very much... It very much put me in the mind of Master, which is my favourite Jeffrey Beavers audio. And it's one of my favourite Big Finish audios of all time. I recommend you listen to it. It's... It was very touching, and it was honestly a clear indicator that, yes, there is some good in the Master if he tried to be. And I also loved the scene where he was trying to say, I am the Master... But, like, he was like, I am the... Would you believe Jeremy? <laughs> like, that bit made me laugh. And I just I just love James Goss's comedy in there. Also, I've not seen Adam Martin's interview of James Goss as of recording this. But I, I shall, um, because I'm very interested. Uh, who else was in it? I might as well speak about Eric Roberts as well. Now, let me tell you. If you think Eric Roberts was a bad master, you're wrong, but I'm in the minority of that viewpoint. But he's great here, and he's really starting to own the role in Big Finish, and I'm looking forward to listening to, to him in his own box set. He, he just does, he just feels like the master if he, if he was played by Eric Roberts, really, you know? He's not too camp, but he's as camp as you'd expect from the master, and it's just like, you know, he, he's, a, he's a good balance, and I... Yeah, I want more of him. Uh, speaking of camp, might as well talk about Alex McQueen. Now, Alex McQueen, his master's very camp, but very much on point. And uh, it's just good to hear Alex McQueen yet again in the role. It's like he never left, in all honesty. And newly introducing Milo Parker as the master, he honestly does a good job. And I honestly believe him as a master at the earliest stage of the master's life. He he does feel like the master just not quite the um I guess emissary of evil we know the master as today, which is a good thing. I I I I do love his betrayal. Let's see. I mean I mean I might as well talk about Mark Gatiss. Uh he's the weak link. I I love his master on Big Finish. I I love all the masters on Big Finish, apart from the Turf one, which isn't in this audio, and I've not heard him, so that's why I've I can't say I like him. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I really did not think um, that Mark Gatiss was given good material here. Not that he delivered a bad performance, he's Mark Gatiss, he, he of course delivers a good performance, and I love his master, and I love how creepy he can be, but, um, yeah, he's, he's given good dialogue, I just don't think he was in it enough, and like, half the time he was in it, he was snogging Michelle Gomez's incarnation, and that weirded me out, in all honesty, but Michelle Gomez's incarnation, apart from the snogging, was excellent. I honestly think she was the strongest performer here, because her version of the Master uh, is more wacky by design rather than execution. And her version of the Master is also one that can be redeemed, and there is an element of good. Hence, uh, the Lumiat, who, uh, spoiler alert, does make a cameo. Um, but, yeah, I... 
I thoroughly enjoyed Missy in this, and, you know, her chemistry with Katie Manning as Joe was honestly brilliant, and I feel like Joe, who is more early in her own character development, feels more generic, but, like, that's the point, and I, I, I just think it works. I really do. And I might as well speak about Katie Manning as Joe right now. Um, she was very well utilised, and I, I, it's good to hear Katie Manning, you know? She's just a very comforting voice to hear. Speaking of a comforting voice, uh, Derek Jacobi is obviously great. And, like, he, he, he... He just turns amazing material into something that we mere mortals do not deserve. He, like, he is my favourite master, and although he wasn't my favourite performer in this audio, he, he was my second favourite because he's Derek Jacoby, he's my favourite master. There's not really much I can comment on other than I love the character trait that he's just obsessed with wine, even to the point where, again, spoiler alert, he actually drink wine he poisoned himself because he does not want to waste the wine and that's just fucking amazing and i love it and finally let's speak about john sim as the master and although i don't like his master conceptually um like i mean he can deliver a good performance so he's not like the worst master ever i just don't like his characterization and here Yes, that's there, but it works here, because I feel like this audio, yes, you do see the flaws of the master, but it's celebrating them, but not in the way of saying that this is good, it's just making it good in order for us to, like, know that, yeah, we're celebrating who the master is in every form, and whether you like it or not, this is who the master was, and we're just gonna make it work and make it intertwine, and I just enjoyed listening to him. Sure, I don't like his zaniness, his arrogance, and just his tenantisms, but he, I can't deny John Sim delivered a good performance here. Because he did deliver a good performance. Just because I don't like the character does not mean an actor cannot deliver a good performance. Just look at Jenna Coleman. But, yeah. Um, anything else? I mean, all the side characters are great, but I must talk about how Chameleon was used. Chameleon was used well, and I do like how John Coleshaw essentially had to play three characters. Chameleon, who he does well, um, the Ainley Master, which was a nice cameo and I think is his stronger impersonation based off of uh, Master Thief and Lesser Evils, uh, because, you know, it's very much, it does sound somewhat like Ainley, uh, rather than his Delgado, which it's like... You know, you, you get it's Delgado, but it's not quite there. At least Ainley is somewhat there. And then he also played the third Doctor. Uh, well, Chameleon as the third Doctor. And, yeah. That was very enjoyable when he was with Joe. And, yeah. I, I honestly think Chameleon was used really well here. And I've not listened to any other Chameleon audio. But, um, Chameleon was used way better here than on the TV series. And I do really like how Chameleon and Joe are here because they're two characters that are heavily tied with the Master that aren't just... Well, they're two companions heavily tied to the Master specifically, I should say. And yeah. I will say it's a shame Sasha Dewana wasn't in it, but he couldn't have been. If he was, that would have elevated this, but because of legal reasons, I get why he wasn't. But... What we got, I'm, I'm here to review what we got, not what we haven't got. And what we got was a very good celebration of the Master that, although did use fan service, isn't really the main focus. The only fan service here is that we've got eight Masters to work with. Well, technically nine. Ten-ish? We got ten-ish Masters? And yeah. And the when they all interact, it's the best moments of the entire thing. Although, they are very brief moments, like, more towards the start and more towards the end is when the Master is just being with the Master. And, yeah, I just love all of their interactions, and when Joe arrived, they just decided to sacrifice her for the lols, basically, and that was a really 
enjoyable scene. I just... I don't know, I just really enjoyed Masterful. And it's not perfect. I have my issues with it. I think I'm going to settle on an 8 out of 10. It's great. It's not amazing, but it's... You know, I think it is a perfect celebration of 50 years of the Master. Because it's basically celebrating who the Master is. And why we should never have a multi-master story. Because the universe would literally die. Spoiler alert for the ending. It has the highest kill count in Doctor Who history. Because the entire universe is just dead now. So it's kind of not canon. But I don't care. I'm reviewing it anyway. Because it's been 50 years since the Master was introduced to our screens. And same thing with Joe. But I'm just going to focus on the Master here. Uh, and I love Joe. But I especially love the Master, and here on the Universals, we are going to continue providing you with videos to do with the Master this month. I hope you enjoy, and I shall see you in my next Master Month video, where I'm going to probably regret trying to make it. I hope I'll get it out within the month this time, unlike, you know, my Matt Smith videos. Anyway, see you guys then.